Hello, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And this is number six in Sounding the Shallows, it and is. we're very pleased to be with you. Yes. The thing is, I think we kind of, all of us, had been, I don't know, guiled into thinking that after Super Saturday, mm. there would be something completely different and totally buzzing. Well, I don't think we really thought that, but that was the impression that was given, wasn't well, it? Well, I think that depends on whether you're a politician or a realist, but yeah, yeah that's what's supposed to have happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know, I think we've heard from quite a few people just in the last week but when you wake up on not so super Sunday, mm. or maybe on the super Saturday, the problems that you've got are the same problems that you've been wrestling with for the last few months uh, and maybe for years. That actually, it's a very superficial change, isn't it? it I found it really, really interesting. In mm. fact, I mean, as you know, because you were with me, we did actually go out for a meal. We on went the first out. Saturday we that did. it was possible. We did. And we really looked forward to it. Um, and when we got to the restaurant, uh, which we'd been to before, it was very bright. People were very, very, they were obviously really going for it. They were yeah. smiling and handing stuff out and mm. making it very clear how we were to operate in this new... Actually, we had um, our temperatures taken when we, had we got temperatures there, taken with, we? A, with a gun. Yes. A, a lady, very bright lady, pointed this something looked like a pistol at us, <laughs> and and took our temperatures. We passed that test, yeah. um, and we sat at the table, and mm. the menus came, and we uh, gave our order, and we did enjoy going out. But there was something in me that didn't work. It mm. didn't become that that event. Didn't become what it perhaps was supposed to. Become and mm. I couldn't quite put my finger on why that was. I also I mean we we haven't been drinking any alcohol for a little while for various reasons, and I had a pint of lager which <laughs> I love, and uh, I enjoyed the first three. <laughs> after that, three sips, uh, not the first three pints, first three um, swallows of it, um, and a sort of quiet mm. fell over me mm. about it all, mm. and we did enjoy it, but mm. it certainly. That in itself was not the thing, the new thing, mm. the change, mm. no. Well, it's pretty sterile in a way, isn't it? But the thing that I think I felt, and I felt it once or twice just recently, is there is still that sense that we're all in it together, whether it was the lockdown or it's the recovery. We need each other. So the people running the restaurant who were so, as you say, so thrilled to get it open mm. and to invite the first customers in needed us. Mm -hmm. And we needed them to sort of represent this new normality. Yeah. It was strange, um, but I think that's because it's tentative. And because mm. people are trying really hard, and also because they could lose their license if it goes wrong. So it may yeah. also be may also be that people are a little bit agnostic about what normal means. Uh -huh. And it reminded me of when way back in the year two thousand, we went to Bangladesh, mm -hmm. didn't we, um, on behalf of World Vision to look at work being done in Dakar and capital. Yeah, and we went to the. Hazaribag, which is a huge slum just outside the main city, on the edge of the main city. And we looked at a couple of projects there, and one of them was two wonderful uh, women who were rescuing little girls from the street and mm. bringing them in off mm. the, the street and doing all sorts of things uh, with them, which were wonderful mm. things. Mm. And when I say rescuing, I mean there was only one career open to lost small girls. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, it's, it's unthinkable, but the, yeah. the prostitution has, was was the only way to eat for some mm. of those kids. Mm. But one of the things they said to us, which I found very interesting, th was that one of the most difficult lessons to teach those children, those girls, was what does normal mean? That's right. What what should normal mean? Yeah, being cared for, not yeah. being abused, being. Yeah. And all the th the positive things you can do. That mm. was 
that was one of their major tasks, isn't it? And if you remember, the interesting thing was that before we went, we'd been sent some information about the projects we were going to look at. And there was a picture of these two little girls wearing very pretty little cotton dresses. They didn't look like street children. And we'd been through the streets, hadn't we, of Hazaribag and seen children on the rubbish tip, seen mm. filthy children with sores all around their mouths and just desperate situations. So when we went into this project, we went into this room, if you remember, and there were rows and rows of little girls wearing the prettiest little dresses, looking very clean. They're all blue dresses, weren't they? <laughs> they were. Yeah. Well, and it turned out that there was a genuine philosophy of love behind this because in order to teach normal, they had to show these little girls something other, didn't they? So when they arrived from the streets, they mm. had a shower, they had their hair washed and they put on this pretty dress. And during mm. the day, they played their instruments and sang their songs and learnt their letters and, and had something to eat at lunchtime. Well, the first or next shock for us was hearing that when they went home the dresses were taken off them and their other clothes were put on yes, and they went home was which was a surprise, very difficult yeah. thing to take in until yeah. we were told that of course if they had gone out in their pretty little dresses mm -hmm. they would have the dresses would have been taken from them and sold oh, as simple as that yeah. but it did have an effect didn't it on these children on these little girls because they loved being the little girl in the pretty dress so when it came to them moving into teenage they really wanted to learn how to sew they wanted to learn the idea that they could have a trade and a new normal had been created mm. by something as symbolic as this mm. as this little dress I mean, we don't know how far that worked if that's no. the word um but we do know that at least a window was open, to use a rather hackneyed metaphor, on a completely different world for those children. Yeah. And yeah, things yeah, yeah. like the, the dresses were so central to that. Yeah. It was a very sweet, yeah. sweet operation. And in that, a way, it? what they were doing was this new normal was going to protect them from the very things you talked about. The fact that the career that had been opened up to them living on the streets had only been that of prostitution. Mm. Uh, becoming part of the commercial sex trade and that protection thing I think is what it's all about at the moment isn't it I mean mm. the new normal is masks the new normal is sanitizing and anybody who has ventured out will know that you do an enormous amount of sanitizing every time you go into a shop yeah. every time you come out of a shop when you get home it's everywhere it is the new armor of protection mm. in a way mm. yeah Yes, it's really odd, isn't it, to have someone say <laughs> continually say, could you sanitize, sanitize. yourself? It makes That's you feel right. rather grubby. It's part of the new say. vocabulary. Yeah. But yeah. it made us think, didn't it, a bit about the armour of God that Paul talks about. And I found in my version, my favourite version of the Bible, which is the CEV, mm. I love the translation because to me it suddenly became alive. Well, I mean, read it then. He's talking about putting on all the armour that God gives you so that you can defend yourself. And I think one of the problems has always been that the suggestion of putting on the armour is you march into battle mm. in a very aggressive way. But this is all about protection uh, because it's all about uh, the forces of darkness. And this is what I liked. It said, let the truth be like a belt around your waist and let God's justice protect you like armour. Your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet and let your faith be like a shield and you will be able to stop all the flaming arrows of the evil one and let God's saving power be like a helmet and for a sword use God's message that comes from the spirit. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Um, but people who take the Bible very literally can get rather caught up in all this. And I mean, obviously, you don't put armor on, right? But it is a metaphor, and it's an interesting one because some of the the, the metaphors within that uh, list are, are very obvious. For instance, if you don't make sure your belt is on, your trousers will fall down. So <laughs> if you tell the truth, if you don't tell the truth, you can find yourself extremely embarrassed. And that's for Christians. That's not for non Chris, that's for Christians yes. to yeah, tell yeah. the truth about what's going on. Yeah. And the helmet of salvation, mm. put in a different way, is 
believing in happy ever after, like the thief on the cross mm. who suddenly saw in mm. the face of Jesus mm. happy ever after. And the, the helmet we wear, or should wear, or hopefully wear, is having that magical knowledge that we cannot seriously be harmed because mm. our minds mm. have been told that it, it is going to be happy ever after mm. in ways that we can't possibly understand mm. now. But I, I, I don't want to lose that. I really, really, really <laughs> don't. I think you have uh, talked about the armour that some of us... Uh, end up wearing uh, well i mean i <laughs> given the, the way people actually are i i did very delicately point out that some of us are wearing the wife fronts of weariness and the <laughs> long johns of lust and various other things um because you read a list like that and it can make you feel very silly mm. indeed mm. but i think actually it's very helpful if you take it bit by bit and mm. look at it at what it means mm. um it's uh, it's it, it's something to to feed us and help us with yeah. defence and protect the, us. Yeah, we Absolutely. need. We do need protection. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One of the uh, things we've been doing the morning, or trying to do every morning, is follow this uh, uh, this Northumbria daily office. And one of the prayers in it has come to mean even more to us than it had before. I think. Um, it's all about. It's all about what it really means to put on the armour of God with some interesting things in it, isn't it? It starts, Christ as a light, mm. illumine and guide me. Then it says, Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. And this day be within and without me. And this is the line that we've talked about so much, isn't it? Lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Mm. And it goes on to say, be in the heart of each to whom I speak and in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. But again, this day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Mm. Christ is the light, Christ is shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. Yeah, yeah. We've enjoyed it, haven't we, being um, going mm. through those things. Um, yeah, the, the thing about... Lowly and meek, Lowly yet all and powerful. Meek, yet all powerful. Every morning when I read that, or we read that, I think about the tension, the paradox that Christians, it's so difficult for us to grasp that it isn't about making ourselves good enough, strong enough, wonderful enough to be people who do things for God. Mm. It's about accepting finally mm. that we are lowly and meek mm. that is where we are yeah. but the other side of that is accepting that we are to be using the power of the holy spirit mm -hmm. in situations where it's given to us mm. and it's not a game and it's not a religious thing mm. it's a absolutely essential part of mm. of um living the Christian mm. life if that's what we're talking about and it isn't the same is it uh, this lowly and meek thing it, it, it's not the same as sort of crawling around saying I am nothing and I I really don't think you're going to want to hear from me when I pray or speak to me or it's mm. something quite different from that isn't it um, this is I don't know this is Rosemary's prayer but I think it's it's lots of our prayers when we're really feeling pretty useless. Dear Father, oh, forgive me for calling you that because you probably don't even know who I am. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. I mean, saying you don't know who I am sounds as if you don't believe you're, I don't believe you're, oh, what's the word that means that you know everything? Omniscient, that's the word. Because I do believe you are omniscient. <laughs> It's just that I don't feel, I don't feel important enough to be part, part of, you know, your kingdom. Oh, goodness. That sounds as if I don't believe you're powerful enough to make it possible. But I do really, I do. It's just that, it's just that I'm such a bad person. No, I don't mean that I don't think Jesus died for me and all that. Because I do, of course I do. And that must have sounded so ungrateful. But it wasn't supposed to because I'm not, I'm not ungrateful. Sorry, I didn't put that very well, did I? What I'm trying to say was that I'm not ungrateful. I'm grateful. I honestly am. 
It's just, I don't always feel... Well, why am I always so sure that everybody else is saved and all right and everything and I'm not? Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, should I? I should not have said that. Christians have a lot to be joyful about and I know that. And on a very deep level, I'm sure that I am. Joyful. Well, of course I am, but you're supposed to feel it sometimes, aren't you? Or perhaps you're not. Well, anyway, thank you for all the, oh, I don't know, all the people at the church because they're all nice. Oh dear, that sounds so bland, doesn't it? How stupid of me. I am so sorry. Do forgive me. Well, of course I know you forgive me. Forgive me. I mean, yours faithfully, me. Mm. Poor old Rosemary. But, um... I mean, you've been through that in your life, haven't you? You've uh, often <laughs> felt very inadequate. Uh, for years, um, and, uh, for years and years. And I think we talked, didn't we, about the number of times God's had to show me that actually he is quite pleased to see me when I come to talk to him. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very difficult. Um, you're absolutely right. We are not doormats, but we are aware that we can never, never do the thing that involves the power of God. And we... Peter couldn't have stood up after the Spirit came and delivered that speech um, if he ha he hadn't been filled with the Spirit, whatever that means. Mm. And there'll be some people who say, what on earth mm. does that mean? Well, I couldn't tell you for sure, but I know that being filled with the Spirit is different from not being filled with the Spirit <laughs> because something happens that is, mm. is quite mm. different. But you've been saying something, haven't you? I mean, you said it to me, and I've heard you saying it to one or two people that I think can sound quite confusing. And it's to do with not being like Jesus. Yeah, I'd, but if the trouble with saying it is that you, you probably need to unpack it straight away. Mm. What I think what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's impossible to be like Jesus. Mm. But it's much easier to be Jesus. Because what Jesus taught was that when he said, I must go, of course, the Spirit has to come. Mm. And when the Spirit comes, it will teach you everything you need to know. And when you need to speak, don't worry, because the Spirit will give you mm. words. Mm. Now, And for, Jesus will come. Jesus will come. And for, for many of us, that hasn't happened uh, or has only happened a tiny bit. Mm. But it does happen. Mm. And... The old th thing we just mentioned about lowly and meek yet all powerful absolutely kicks into this mm. because you need we need the humility to be quartermasters, quartermasters who pe people who who stand behind a, a desk and give soldiers their stuff because it comes out through another rack on the other side of them. And that's that's the role of the Christian, I think, to be able to do that. And it's probably really important, isn't it, even when you say that, to not think, and I know what Jesus was like. I mm. know what he would do. Yeah. Because it was such a complex, extraordinary character as yeah. a man, let alone as God. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there was a time when I thought, oh, well, I'll just make a... A quick list of the aspects of Jesus we meet in the Bible because um, some I don't remember where it comes but in the New Testament somewhere it says Jesus is the image of the invisible God so if you look at Jesus you're mm. looking at, at God so if you want to be like Jesus uh, I, I warn be you Jesus. there are little problems here um, so he, he, here's a sample of the things that he is image of the invisible God given for us a lover of nature, committed, aggressive, accessible. Uncompromising, strangely meek, a storyteller, a master of timing. Hardworking, relaxed, emotional, passionate, compassionate. Prayerful, a radical, a wit, a good son, a strange son, a good friend. An enjoyer of parties. He relished the company of people, but did not trust the hearts of men. Filled with sadness, filled with joy, filled with love, filled with frustration. He adored children, probably because they reminded him of home. He broke his own rules, angry with enemies and disciples, happy to get down on his knees to wash feet. He was a man with secret friends needy 
troubled, terrified, obedient, lost, lonely, neglected, very badly hurt, courageous, unpredictable, dead, alive, triumphant, forgiving, a lover of the lost, a man who knew how to cook fish, given for us, image of the invisible God. And that's what we're told is inside us, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the challenge is to give up moaning about being inadequate. Yeah. To try to accept who we are and to be very thrilled by the fact that the Holy Spirit can take over if necessary mm. when he's needed. Mm. And maybe lot, that'll be the new normal maybe if it we will, can really there, grasp there's it. There's a lot more to be said about that. Mm. And I, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this will have a lot of views in that area. Well, that'd be great to hear them and also great to hear how other people are venturing out into this strange yeah. new world that we yeah. find ourselves in. Yeah, what is normal? What is normal? Don't know. Maybe we'll know next week. See you yeah, next maybe week. we will. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye.